was, you know, I was kind of afraid I was going to find him in the box. At least he's not in the box. Uh. Hey guys, welcome back to Hoffman Tactical. So today I'm going to be doing just a quick just unboxing and overview of the Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer. Uh, so, so the specifications in this printer are about, it's got about a, a little bit more than an 8 inch by 8 inch by 8 inch build area. Now you can't build anything that big with certain materials like I'm right here I'm printing with ASA which is similar to ABS and due to shrinkage you're probably limited to a part that's got a footprint on the bed of you know maybe uh, six square inches so, you know maybe maybe eight square inches if you get things uh, adhered well enough so with other plastics you can print larger than that and that's your overall build volume is the largest to build the machine can create I'm looking at tolerances right now of around uh, plus or minus three thousandths of an inch on parts and uh, some plastics shrink, like this ASA shrinks by about 0.6%. Uh, and uh, that's something that I just printed some parts with, took some measurements, and then I'm adjusting now in the Prusa slicing software. As far as print time goes, um, like a like a four ounce part of good you know, of good size, maybe about four inches uh, tall, and a, a, a six inch square uh, footprint, it it produces about you know a six a six square inch footprint takes about 12 hours to print. So you can see that it takes some time to make parts. Now something really important I've learned with these, with using this printer here is that without proper CAD modeling software, you got yourself a uh, you know $800 printer. It doesn't do you much good because you're limited to either using uh, free software or low cost software, which which really limits you in what you can design and um, how much how you know, how complex your models can be, or you're limited to having to download like SDL files off the internet which limits you to having to use other people's designs. So you really, even though you've got, your, you've got yourself a 3D printer, you also really need to be thinking about your CAD modeling software you use with that printer. It's just really a package, and both are absolutely essential to be able to make a finished custom product. So I bought the kit edition. The assembly manual, as you can see, is a, it's a pretty thick paperback. It took about 12 hours from unpacking the box to actually printing the first item. And uh, that's, you know, I did over a few days, but that, that's kind of what you can expect. It was not a difficult process to assemble. The manual is extremely detailed. Um, it walks you through every single uh, step, no matter how basic or, or, or small it may seem to be. And it, that, it took about 12 hours, so you could do it in a couple days. You can put it together. You save $250 by assembling it yourself rather than buying the entire kit ready, you know, the uh, package ready to go rather than buying the kit. You have a wide choice of materials. Like right now, what I'm using is ASA, which is similar to ABS plastic. Uh, it's strong, but except the ASA is uh, UV resistant, so it can be used outdoors. I'm um, getting good layer adhesion, but the, a few tips I found with this is you have to print really slowly, around uh, 40 millimeters a, a second or less, and also you're limited to printing smaller parts. If you have a too large of a surface area, the part will warp off the bed and pretty much ruin your print. There are other options. There is also uh, PLA plastic, which I have right here, and that's what uh, this small item, I'll grab it. This year, I'm sure you've seen some of these. Uh, it's this worthless little part. It's a small boat. They call it the Benchy is the model. And uh, it's got a very good surface finish on it. And uh, it's a very detailed model. And that's made from PLA, which is this plastic here. But it's a uh, brittle plastic and is not suited for uh, mechanical structures or any, any real practical parts. It's good for making rigid prototypes. But if your part is going to need to take any wear or be able to withstand any practical use, it's not, it's not really going to do the job. You can also get, and I haven't tried this yet, you can also get plastic with carbon fiber in it. And this is going to run you about four times that of ordinary plastic. So ordinary plastic is going to cost around $10 to $15 a pound. This comes at $60 a pound. So it's a good bit more, uh, but I'm expecting to get some very high strength, uh, durable, lightweight parts made from this plastic. So as far as cost of parts, a, uh, it's like a common, like a four ounce part, and that gives you, if you make like a, let's say a, a shell, you're making a, uh, like a box or a part that's got a lot of empty space in it, but with relatively complex features, uh, like a, um, that's you know, maybe four inches high, it's just going to weigh you around uh, four ounces, and that'll only cost like three dollars worth of plastic. So the parts are very low cost, uh, you know, if you take out the cost of the machine. And the life of this machine, uh, how many hours you can put, at it, put on it, I really don't know. I've got, I've got about 150 hours on it right now, and uh, it's still ticking away just fine. The overall uh, life, if you run this machine actually you're making parts as, per, as far as your production goes, you're going to put thousands of hours on it very, very quickly, uh, simply because you're, you know, you'll be running it 
15 hours a day. Uh, and you can see that really adds up. It has some really nice features, uh, such as if the filament on the spool runs out, uh, the machine will not, you will, you will not will not keep printing uh, with no filament. You won't wait, just ruin your print. It has a filament sensor so that when the filament runs out, uh, it'll beep at you, it'll warn you, and you can put more filament in and continue the print without any problems. It's got sensors, uh, you know, it's got temperature sensors on it. It has the, the fans or RPM sensing, so it can detect a lot of problems that, it's, that might occur during long prints and alert you to them so you can fix them without having to, uh, you know, ruin your print or possibly the machine, you know, self-destruct it. So we've done some uh, experiments with printing threads, and I've got a one-tenth of an inch pitch uh, thread here. It's a custom thread. The teeth on it have about 50 thousandths uh, tall and wide. It's the profile, and it's printing them with perfect detail. And there's something uh, called overhang. So if you're printing a, a part that, that goes up, and then you have a shelf on it, the, this is a limitation with uh, fused deposition uh, 3D printers, is that uh, if you have a shelf, the filament needs something to sit on. So it's got a print head and it's, it's injecting filament onto the part to build it up. And it, it's, if it tries to print open space, it'll make a, an ugly overhang. You know, it'll have stringing and it'll build up eventually, but it will not make a functional part. It'll require a lot of post-processing uh, and sanding. So you can go down to about a, a 35 degree angle with very good results. You can even go lower than that with PLA, but with, with these high, higher strength ASA plastic or ABS plastic, you want to maintain like, like a 35 degree or a steeper angle. And in that case, you don't need anything called, of this thing called support material. So what support material is, is while you, when you're printing, you have, a, you have a steep angle, such as a 90 degree angle or a horizontal line, which is not supported, it will build up a, a very thin structure, weak, thin structure underneath that part as it's printing, as the layers are going up, that supports that overhang. And then when you're done, you break that out. And I've used that with this ASA with really good success. A, a complex, large part you can clean up in less than 10 minutes, and then you have a fully functional uh, plastic prototype. So just for reference uh, for print time here, if you want to make a functional, let's say an AR-15 receiver, which is the part you probably are all familiar with, it's probably going to, going to run you around 24 hours of print time, and it'll probably cost like you know six six dollars, six to eight dollars worth of material to print one, and uh, that's using this ABS here. If you want to print it from carbon fiber, which will probably make a more functional part or last longer, you know it's going to cost you thirty dollars, twenty five dollars. Uh, and once again, it's going to run you around 24 hours of print time to print a part of that size. All right, so we should get back to you guys with a more in-depth review here at some point. Uh, but right now, we'll just go quick, a quick, quick recap of what we told you already. The price point of this printer uh, out the door with some plastics around $850. That'll get you running and printing parts. Um, that is for the kit version, uh, newly assembled, you know, ready to go, ready to print. It's going to cost you around $1,100, $1,150. Uh, it's with shipping. And it is made in, in the Czech Republic, so it comes from uh, Prague, and it's Prusa is the company, and the uh, print quality uh, is very good as far as surface finish, and the tolerance on the printed parts uh, for parts that are about uh, one, one inch in diameter to two inches is about plus or minus three thousandths of an inch. On larger parts, that distance may become greater, uh, but from what I've observed, it appears to be um, just a fixed plus or minus three thousandths tolerance, I assume due to the stepping on the, on the stepper motors. And as always, guys, we always have lots of new videos coming, so take a look, you know, keep watching, take a look out for upcoming video on this budget uh, laser rangefinder. It's the Go 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 uh, brand laser rangefinder. Uh, well, that's what he got you for your birthday. For the rest of you viewers, uh, thanks so much for watching, and look forward to uh, some more future reviews like this in the coming week or two.
So right here it shows us this here is the height above the bed, I assume in millimeters. Um, and then this here is the temperature of our nozzle, and this is the desired temperature. Right here we have bed temperature, desired temperature, all in Celsius of course. This is the percent done with the, with the, with the print, this is the print we're doing. Um, that there's a speed, it's at 100%, you can crank it up much faster than you want it, but it degrades print quality. We'll just do the corner. 